Jai Hind Vande Matram. Namaste. This is Kunal Mehta from Make Me Scientific. And in this video, we are going to discuss about a grade 11 topic in physics that is sonometer. It's a part of waves chapter and we have to understand that what are the uses of sonometer and how does a sonometer work upon, right? With the help of the sonometer, you can also um, uh, verify three different laws. That means by increasing the tension, you can see that the speed of the transverse waves which are created in the string also increases. If you increase the mass per unit length, that means you take a thicker wire, you will see that the speed of the transverse wave decreases. These can be experimentally verified, right? So, these are some things that you need to understand as well as the last law was that if you increase the length of the string, okay, uh, that means if you increase the distance between two bridges and then perform the experiment, you will see that the frequency of the waves decreases. So, that's why what happens is in case of the musical instruments, if you take a longer wire and then pluck it and a shorter wire and pluck it, the shorter wire is going to produce the sound of higher frequency. So, there are few laws which you can verify with the help of the sonometer. So, I should say sum up that it is an instrument to measure the speed of the transverse wave on the string. So, this is how a sonometer looks like practically and here I have shown a schematic diagram of a sonometer. So, this is the string made up of say stainless steel or it may be made up of aluminum also. Now, there are some weights which are being suspended with the help of the pulley. These are two bridges out of which this bridge is fixed bridge and this can be moved in left or right direction. Now, this string is fixed at this particular end and then we are supposed to hit a tuning fork with a rubber pad and we have to make sure that the tuning fork touches the, the string. And due to the vibrations of the tuning fork, this part of the string which is between the bridges B1 and B2 excites and it starts oscillating. If the tuning fork's frequency and the frequency of this length of the wire matches, due to that resonance is created and then this string vibrates with large amplitude. To check that, we are going to place a very small paper rider somewhere over here. If this paper rider falls, we will understand that this starts oscillating with larger amplitude and an antinode is created over here. So, basically when you put a vibrating tuning fork at this area of the string, only this length of the string vibrates and the standing waves are created over here, right? So, in this first part of the video, we are going to change the length of the wire between these two bridges and we are going to keep the tuning fork's frequency constant and in the next part of the video we are going to keep the length between both the bridges as constant and then we are going to change the tuning fork's frequency okay so here this bridge b1 is fixed and then we are going to move b2 in right direction to accommodate more and more part of the standing wave so please understand that whatever wave is formed over here in between these two bridges, that wave is formed due to the vibration of the tuning fork. So, the tuning fork behaves as the source. So, the frequency of the wave created over here is same as the frequency of the source. Okay. And now, since this wire's length and its mass we know, we can easily find the value of mu. Mu is basically mass per unit length, mass of the wire. divided by the length of the wire, correct, which is mu. So, the mass per unit length of the wire we know and in this way we can find out the speed of the standing waves which are created between B1 and B2. How come? We know the formula V is equal to under root of T by mu where T is the tension in the string and the tension in the string at this particular point, the tension itself balances the weight. So, that is equal to mg. We are saying that when everything is stationary, right, this mass does not go up or down, the string is being pulled under some tension T. So, in that case, T will be equal to mg. Now, the mass over here, we know, 
right so in the experiment you will be given the masses so you have to adjust the masses after you fix the mass this mgb knows that means you know the value of t right so this is known mu is known so you can experimentally verify the value of v from here okay i mean theoretically you can find out the value of v from here and the experimentally i'll tell you what the way is so just assume that by putting this vibrating tuning fork over here you are getting the first harmonic like this i'm going to call the wavelength of this wave as lambda so only half of the wave is accommodated over here right so we can say that the length between these two bridges i'm going to call this length as l1 and this can be recorded with the help of the scale which is already fixed in the sonometer all right so this l1 is basically half of the wavelength because you require double the length to accommodate the complete wave so this is half the wavelength in the length l1 so i can say that lambda 1 sorry the lambda itself is equal to twice of l1 correct now what you need to do is let the vibrating tuning fork be here itself and let the vibrating tuning fork induce the vibrations over here you slightly move the bridge in this direction now since this point is a fixed end so here a node will be created and this point is also fixed in the sense that this point can't move in the sense i'm saying the bridge can move but now this point on the wire becomes fixed so here also a node should be created so you get the first harmonic now you move this in right direction and until you get the next node you won't be able to see the complete wave so you need to keep on moving this in rightward direction and once you reach at some point where again another node comes you will see something like this so basically there are two loops now which are completed now this is the same this is the same wave please do not confuse with the second harmonic this wave and this wave are having the same frequency the frequency is that of the tuning fork the wavelength is also the same because now you are able to fit the complete wave in this length l2 so now l1 and l2 can be experimentally verified and the value of l2 is equal to simply wavelength because one complete wave is being accommodated you understand this very well that due to the action of tuning fork you got this now you shift this in the rightward direction unless you get the another node like this so you are able to accommodate the same wave but the complete wave over here in this more length okay so now taking the difference that is l2 minus l1 that is equal to lambda minus lambda by 2 that is equal to only half of the wavelength so l2 minus l1 is equal to half of the wavelength that means wavelength can be found as l2 minus l1 multiplied by 2 so experimentally you can find the wavelength experimentally you know the frequency so experimentally we know that the speed is equal to frequency times wavelength of any wave standing wave or any transverse wave which is moving through the string so experimentally you can find out these two multiply them and find v theoretically you can substitute the value and verify the value of v from here this v and this v must come same okay so this is how the part one goes now what else you can do with the help of the sonometer so please note suppose v is equal to under root of t by mu and that same v is equal to f times lambda now suppose you know mu suppose you know the frequency of the tuning fork experimentally you can calculate the value of lambda in that case you can find out the value of tension and tension is equal to mg so if this mass is unknown you can find out the value of this unknown mass okay second thing suppose this tension we know mu we know lambda you can find out experimentally in that case the frequency of the wave which is same as the frequency of the tuning fork can also be found out if this is unknown to us so there are variety of applications in this case
So the second part of the sonometer is basically the repetition of the standing waves. Okay. So here what we are going to do is we are going to change the tuning forks frequency but we are not going to change the distance between two bridges. So what happens is the length in all the three cases of the string which vibrates basically this part of the string which is between the bridges is supposed to vibrate and show the resonance. Okay. So suppose you select a frequency F1 of a tuning fork such that you get one closed loop due to the effect of resonance in the wire whose length is L between bridges B1 and B2. So you select this frequency F1 such that this wire's length starts resonating due to the resonance this has a larger amplitude thereby creating antinode over here and at both the bridges because they are fixed ends you will get a node. This is the first harmonic, this is first harmonic and the length L is actually double the length is equal to wavelength. I am going to say the wavelength as lambda 1, the frequency of the wave is F1 because who is producing the wave? The source and the source itself is the tuning fork. So the frequency of the waves and the frequency of the tuning fork are the same. And this is the first harmonic, so I am going to just write it down as 2L by 1. Now, here if you want to create the second harmonic, that means if you want to create two loops in the same length like this. This is the second possibility or the second length. So, this lambda 2 would be basically, actually the one complete wave is accommodated. So, lambda 2 is equal to L, but I am just writing 2L by 2. So, the pattern gets created 2L by 1, 2L by 2. In the next case, you might have guessed it right. This will be 2L by 3. So, if you want this pattern to be created over here, you will have to change the tuning fork. Let us say its frequency is F2. We will in investigate what are the frequency ratios and all those stuff. But now, if you want a higher harmonic, that means if you want three particular loops to be formed over here like this. That is the third harmonic to be produced, lambda 3. This lambda 3, you can see one complete wave and one half wave. So, one complete plus one half wave, that is 3 by 2 times lambda is accommodated in this, in this length. So, that means 1.5 lambda. So, this is 3 by 2 lambda is accommodated in the length. So, you cross multiply, you get this expression. The frequency is F3. Now, if you look carefully, the wavelength is getting decreased. But the wave's speed is going to remain the same because these transverse wave speed is under root of T by mu. We are not changing the tension in all the three cases. We are not changing the mu in all the three cases. So, the V remains the same. So, we know V is equal to F times lambda. V is same in all the cases and the wavelength decreases. This is the highest possibility of the wavelength. And then as you keep on going to the higher harmonic, the wavelength decreases. So, the frequency must increase. So, this frequency F3 is greater than F2, greater than F1, right. Now, if you see that the wavelength decreases by a factor of 2, so the frequency is going to get double up, right. And how come? Just let us guess this one. In the same way, if I say lambda n, this is the one loop, so one. There are two loops, so two, three loops, so three. So, in the same way, if we say the nth case, the nth harmonic that is equal to 2L by n, the frequency, let us say Fn. So, Fn times lambda n is equal to V. So, we can find out the expression for the frequency from here. Fn is equal to V upon lambda n that is 2L times n. This is n by 2L under root of T by mu. Now, how can we say this is the second harmonic? Because, look, the frequency F2 here will be equal to V upon the wavelength that is 2L by 2. So, this 2 goes up. I am not going to cancel it. So, 2 times of V by 2L. Here, the frequency F1 is equal to V by lambda that is 2L by 1. So, the 1 goes up. In the same way, the frequency F3 is 
v by lambda 3 that is 2l by 3 so 3 goes up now look carefully this is 3 times of v by 2l this is 2 times of v by 2l and this is 1 times of v by 2l so this is the fundamental frequency this frequency is double of this one f2 is twice the f1 so basically this is the second harmonic case and this frequency f3 is 3 times the fundamental frequency so this is the third harmonic case now you can call this as first overtone this is the second overtone and so on so if you want this loop to be formed you have to take the frequency f1 if you want the second harmonic in the same string between the same length or between the in the same length between bridges b1 and b2 you need to double the frequency of the tuning fork if you want the third harmonic triple the frequency of the fundamental frequency take that tuning fork and you will be able to excite and get this waveform so this was basically the second part but the first part serves the purpose to measure the standing wave speed rate.